Assalamu alaikum, my dear brothers and sisters, and welcome back to Politics and Debates. Today's topic, inshallah, we're going to be discussing chemical and nuclear weapons. Now, we live in a day and age where governments are able to get hold of weapons that can cause mass devastation and destruction, all at the click of a button. These are tense and dangerous times that we're living in. And many of us might ask the question, when our Imam, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, hasten his reappearance on the earth, when he returns and when he brings justice to this world, would he use such weapons? What alternatives could there be? Joining me to discuss this and more is my esteemed guest, Dr. Zahir. Assalamu alaikum. So first of all, what is um, the Islamic viewpoint on chemical and nuclear weapons? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen wa salatu wa salam ala Muhammad wa alayhi al-tayyibin wa tahirin. It's obvious that Islam, uh, uh, at least there is no room for uh, weapons of mass destruction uh, as far as Islam is concerned. And um, uh, it uh, does not agree uh, to this, uh, to such uh, weapons, mm -hmm. um, because as uh, they were well known, they cause mass destruction. Mm -hmm. uh, they go beyond um, the front line, and um, in fact, uh, Islam, as uh, it showed during uh, the reign of the uh, two people who embodied em embodied the teachings of Islam. That is the the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alihi, Amir al muminin alayhi salam, Imam Ali alayhi salam. Mm -hmm. um, they tried to um, as much as they could, uh, and they did um, their best to minimize uh, war and conflict mm -hmm. and uh, 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 friction. Um, um, they use every opportunity to resort to talks, mm -hmm. um, debate and negotiation rather than fighting. Mm -hmm. um, they only engage in fighting as a last resort mm -hmm. when uh, uh, it was in self-defense. So uh, in principle, Islam uh, would uh, 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 resort to uh, battle, to fight, to combat purely as a, ra as a last resort and uh, it will exhaust uh, uh, all avenues mm -hmm. <coughs> in order to avoid um, conflict mm -hmm. and to avoid bloodshed mm -hmm. and uh, to uh, um, achieve whatever th it wants to achieve through talks and negotiation. Mm -hmm. um, now to talk about weapons of mass reduction is absolute uh, no. Mm -hmm. um, and of course this is not just um, wishful thinking. Uh, we have in the hadith that Imam Ali salam, and it's mentioned in this book, Imam Ali salam, narrates that uh, uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, instructed us um, not to throw poison, uh, catapult poison uh, in the land of the infidels. Okay. Mm. So if you like that was the chemical we weapon of the day. Mm -hmm. They had chemical weapons, they had poison, mm -hmm. uh, or it was available mm -hmm. at least. And the, they were the means of delivery, mm -hmm. uh, which was the manjanir or the catapult. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, and <coughs> the Prophet, according to the narration from Imam Ali alayhi salam, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, uh, expressly instructed the Muslims not to use this weapon of mass destruction. Even though that could have given a huge advantage to Even the Muslims. Even though it could have given a huge advantage. Yeah. Um, in fact, as you can see, when, with, the, with the treatment with prisoners, and they put uh, the, the themselves at a disadvantage in order to avoid mm -hmm. <coughs> suffering mm -hmm. and bloodshed. Mm -hmm. um, we have in one of the cases when uh, um, they had the opportunity, the Muslims had the opportunity to cut, to cut off the water supply mm -hmm. um, to their enemy, if you like. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, in fact, this information came from the other side. Mm -hmm. uh, yet the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we wanted to go, we don't, I don't want to go into the details of that, but the Prophet didn't use that opportunity mm -hmm. uh, because it said it's immoral to cut off the water supply to the, 
to the other side. Mm -hmm. So he put himself at a disadvantage and he um, allowed himself and his, his party to sustain more mm -hmm. damage in order to avoid uh, using this option of cutting off water supply. So stick so to the ethics and good manners exactly, of Islam. Exactly. Mm -hmm. that, um, it goes without saying that, the, the, as I said, the Prophet and Imam Ali salam, Amir al-Mu'mineen, they were the embodiment of the teachings of Islam. Mm -hmm. And if we want to know how Islam was practiced and was implemented, uh, we need to refer to the history of these two individuals, mm -hmm. Imam Ali and the, uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. Mm -hmm. um, so yes, we have this hadith that uh, uh, the Prophet uh, uh, prohibited the use of chemical weapons, if you like, mm -hmm. um, against the infidels. Mm -hmm. And um, that strengthens this, this argument that we, we don't have, there is no room for weapons of mass destruction uh, according to the teachings of Islam. And Islam, <coughs> at the end of the day, wants to minimize uh, uh, war as much as possible mm -hmm. and uh, not to use, uh, not to escalate it in any way, let alone using mass we weapons of mass destruction. Mm -hmm. Yes, there's really nothing good about it. Not only does it cause total destruction, but also you have issues of destroying the environment. Again, yeah. something that is part of the ethics of um, engaging in war in Islam, you're not supposed to damage the environment. And another thing as well is the huge cost that governments go to, how much money they spend on these weapons. I mean, we could that wealth could be used for so many beneficial things. I mean, look in the UK alone, yes, we're, we're considered a rich and wealthy country, but there are poor people in this country. There are people that have to go to food banks just to eat. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. unfortunately, it's, it's very sad that um, the, um, if you like governments of developed countries have um, managed to um, convince themselves, I would mm -hmm. rather say fool themselves, uh, into um, uh, opting for weapons, weapons of mass destruction. Mm -hmm. uh, it is really to the, at the least is to the detriment of uh, their own people because mm -hmm. huge amount of money goes into that industry mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, and uh, whereas that money, that budget could be used for uh, schools and hospitals and housing and mm -hmm. and all other social services required mm -hmm. in in every community mm -hmm. absolutely um i'd really like to talk about imam mehdi may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hasten his reappearance when he reappears i suppose one of the major thing one of the major things that he's going to have to do is he's going to have to deal with these nuclear and chemical weapons. How do you think you go about kind of ending this practice as such, this kind of arms race that is going on? Um, <laughs> well, inshallah, when the Imam uh, reappears, Hajar Allah Ta'ala Farajo Sharif, when uh, he reappears, basically you will get uh, the people to their senses mm -hmm. and um, uh, they will uh, most people today realize that this is wrong yes and uh, this is uh, futile um, uh, but unfortunately you have the minority who, who are in control and sort of they make these decisions mm -hmm. um, <coughs> inshallah uh, at the time of Imam Mahdi um, people will come to their senses and realize that the, this is these are completely unnecessary Mm -hmm. uh, this will be the policy of the of the imam. Mm -hmm. uh, <coughs> um, uh, it, it will uh, the poli just as like the policy of uh, his forefathers, Imam Ali alayhi salam and the Prophet sallallahu mm -hmm. alayhi is um, to avoid uh, war at all cost. Mm -hmm. And of course, when it comes to weapons of mass destruction, uh, it is ever so more critical and important mm -hmm. because. As the name goes, right, so as if, if such a war breaks out, it causes chaos. It causes almost absolute destruction, mm -hmm. and um, no one no one wins in such in such uh, in such a war. Yes. Um, so it goes without saying that uh, the Imam Ajalullah Taala Faraj Sharif, may Allah hasten his reappearance, will uh, 
will enable the people, will argue with people that they are, they, they, are, they are to the benefit of no one and they will not be used. Mm -hmm. And they will be, or hopefully even before that, they will be uh, put out of action mm -hmm. uh, through agreements and negotiation. Inshallah. Hopefully that will happen between the powers who have these, these weapons. Inshallah, we can but hope and pray as Inshallah. well. Our du'as are so powerful Inshallah. at the end of the day. Um, another thing that I'm really interested in is Imam Mehdi, he's going to face many different trials and he is going to have to face battles. I'm interested, what kind of weaponry might he use as an alternative to these chemical and nuclear weapons that we know? Um, not much is talked about this as to what kind of weapons he'll be used. Mm -hmm. <coughs> the emphasis uh, when the Imam... Uh, May Allah hasten his reappearance, uh, uh, reappears, is that um, he will, Yasiru bi Sirati Jaddah. He will go uh, and uh, conduct his uh, affairs <coughs> just like his uh, grandfather did, the Prophet Muhammad. Mm -hmm. he, um, uh, and that policy would be to try to resort, to exhaust all other options other than uh, mm -hmm. war. Mm -hmm. uh, so, um, and, and therefore, the emphasis is more on that rather than what kind of weapons he will be using. Mm -hmm. um, um, other than sword, nothing else is mentioned. So, so um, yeah. mm -hmm. um, and, um, uh, and as I said, the emphasis is more on uh, inviting people to reason, mm -hmm. talking to people, providing guidance, um, people of different faiths will embrace mm -hmm. uh, and follow the Imam. Um, it is, we have uh, narrated that uh, uh, Prophet Jesus, uh, salam, peace be upon him, he will descend to earth mm -hmm. and he will follow the Imam. And of course, his followers will follow the Imam. Mm -hmm. That is, the Christians of the world will follow Jesus, who will follow the Imam. So basically, with such uh, 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 schemes, there, there will be no room for, you know, global wars and mm -hmm. use of, mm -hmm. you know, fancy weapons and what have you. Mm -hmm. um, it's the, um, the emphasis will be on guidance, mm -hmm. on <coughs> identifying the truth mm -hmm. and following the truth, following Jesus. Jesus is with, along with Imam Mahdi alayhi salam. So the whole trend will be along those lines, mm -hmm. uh, along, as I said, truth and guidance mm -hmm. rather than anything else. Mm -hmm. They may be, um, there are mentions sort of um, uh, small battles here and there, Skirmishes, yeah. but in fact those battles are all in the locality of like uh, the Arabian Peninsula, mm -hmm. Iraq and Sham mm -hmm. and these guys, these guys, kind of the Middle East if you like. And they are sort of local um, mm -hmm. battles with uh, mm -hmm. uh, people, I don't know what kind of people there will be, that um, uh, um, who will be still very stubborn mm -hmm. and want to continue fight the Imams. Mm -hmm. but, but other than those, we don't know of any other battles. Mm -hmm. At least there are no reports of any other p battles taking place, you know, mm -hmm. um, wide, uh, further apart, mm -hmm. like in Europe, US, Asia, and so on. No mention of that. Is. If there are one or two battles, it's in Sham, Iraq, and uh, 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 Arabian Peninsula. The emphasis made that we make sure we follow the teachings of Islam so that we are, uh, the Imam is pleased with us, inshallah. Yeah, and that we're ready for him, inshallah. absolutely. Thank you so much as ever, Dr. Zahir. Um, uh, my dear brothers and sisters, please do stay tuned for Home and Living, where Sister Fatima is going to be discussing how to use social media, inshallah.